Hey everybody, welcome to Blockchain Central. Today we're going to summarize and recap the month of November and see what happened in the blockchain space in the last 30 days. Today we've got some news on China's attempts to integrate blockchain, Russian digital war against cybercrime, and a dark story of the dark web. Let's break it down. November brings developments on blockchain integration in China. Following the speech of President Xi, the Chinese central bank started promoting the use of blockchain in finance. The People's Bank of China stated that the use of blockchain technology could solve the issue of information asymmetry in the trade finance, while providing proof of trade authenticity. The statement adds that blockchain technology effectively reduces financing risk for financial institutions and lowers financing costs for importers and exporters. The Chinese central bank is now developing its own digital currency. It was meant to be released in November, but the date was moved by a senior official. The project is now, however, in a state of hastened development due to the announcement of Facebook's Libra project. Meanwhile, Russian authorities are developing mechanisms to arrest and confiscate digital assets such as cryptocurrencies. The relevant proposal should be prepared by December 31st, 2021 by the Ministry of Internal Affairs together with Rosfin Monitoring, the Prosecutor General's Office, the Investigative Committee, the Justice Ministry, the Federal Customs Service, and the Federal Security Service with the participation of the Supreme Court. The information that such a measure is being discussed, along with other proposals to combat IT crimes, was confirmed by a representative of Group IB, a company that specializes in combating cybercrimes. Currently, cryptocurrencies in Russia are in a gray area. Therefore, in order to be confiscated, they must first be recognized at the legislative level either as goods or in cash equivalents, says Konstantin Golikov, co-owner and CEO of the DailyRich.ru platform. The formulations that exist in the currently developed bill for the cryptosphere are not suitable for these purposes, says Nikita Kolokov, member of the State Duma's expert council. Despite the lack of legal status for cryptocurrencies, Russian courts still have to deal with them. In May 2018, a truly precedent case was made by the Ninth Arbitration Court of Appeal concerning the case of personal bankruptcy. The court obliged the debtor to give the bankruptcy trustee access to the contents of the cryptocurrency wallet for inclusion in the bankruptcy estate and thereby recognized the cryptocurrency as property. We will keep you posted on the developments in Russia's attempts to seize cybercriminals virtual assets. Let's continue our journey into the cybercrime world and move across the ocean to New York City. Hugh Brian Hanley pled guilty in Manhattan federal court to money laundering charges based on his attempt to launder the proceeds of a narcotics trafficking operation he ran on the dark website known as The Silk Road. The Silk Road was an online criminal marketplace designed to be outside the reach of law enforcement or governmental regulations. All transactions on Silk Road could be completed only through the use of Bitcoin. The Silk Road was used by several thousand drug dealers and other unlawful vendors to distribute hundreds of kilograms of illegal drugs and other illicit goods and services to over 100,000 buyers. As a result, the site helped to launder hundreds of millions of dollars deriving from these unlawful transactions. Law enforcement shut down Silk Road in 2013. Its operator, Ross Ulbricht, is currently serving a life sentence on charges of narcotics distribution, computer hacking, and conspiracy. Law enforcement agents found evidence that Hanley was a high-ranking member of Farmville, a narcotics vendor operating through the Silk Road. Hugh Hanley used Silk Road as a means to sell drugs to people all over the world, U.S. Attorney Jeffrey S. Behrman said in a statement. Then he laundered more than $19 million in profits through cryptocurrency. Now Hugh Hanley is facing 20 years in prison for one count of concealment money laundering and 10 years for one count of engaging in a financial transaction of the criminally derived property. To finish our report on a positive note, the West African Republic of Ghana is trying to take a step into the future and issue its own virtual currency. Dr. Ernest Addison, the governor of Ghana's central bank, says that Ghana is undergoing rapid digitalization and has a growing mobile banking sector driven by mobile phones. According to Addison, mobile money transfers increased by 70% from 2017 to 2018. GCB Bank aims to create electronic currencies backed by cash equivalent, which will allow customers to have access to electronic wallets issued by Ghana Central Bank. Addison clarifies that SETI is not a form of cryptocurrency or Bitcoin. It's just electronic money backed by currency. What GCB develops is simply an electronic representation of SETI that the Bank of Ghana puts into circulation. So it's not crypto. 
This move clearly shows that the Bank of Ghana recognizes the pivotal role of technology as it tries to lead the country's banking system into the digital world. Okay, so that's it for the November recap. Let us know if you feel that we missed anything. But before you go, please know that this content does neither represent financial, legal, or tax advice, nor is it supposed to be understood or interpreted as solicitation to buy or sell any securities, coins, or tokens. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to Blockchain Central to never miss a beat. Also, check out our blog, link in the description below. You can also follow me on Instagram at TheBlueMantic to catch up with my other projects. See you in the next one.